Hello guys. Welcome to Diablo the Primordial. This video is the continuation video after Threat is back. So if you have not watched it, then please watch it. The link is in the description. And please check out my second channel Top Anime Sensei for the light novel of Tensura. So without any further delay let's start. But before we start please like, subscribe and press the bell icon so you don't miss the updates. Good grief, what a really troublesome guy he was. Nonetheless, if what Yuki had said was true, I could understand how he got the power equal to mine. It was probably true that Velda was a manas, an existence that assisted all of your abilities was very helpful, just like Sealsan. Even if it was a spell formulation with difficult control, it could activate it as your proxy, in other words, while you are concentrating in close combat like this, further attacks could be prepared without your opponent sensing it. However, I couldn't comprehend why Yuki would bother to tell me that. I suspected the motive behind it whether it was also one of his plans, the existence of Amanas itself could be considered as a very important trump card that should be hidden, after all, I naturally felt the desire to find out his goal for telling me that. No, I suppose making me worried itself like this was what Yuki expected, there would be no end if I kept on thinking about it. I earnestly reconfirmed that Yuki was a very troublesome enemy for me. You said that can control all of Veldanava's powers? Don't get conceited, you lowly human. Guy who was listening to me and Yuki's conversation, shouted while glaring at Yuki with his crimson eyes blazed with fury. As if they were following his lead, Velzard and Velgrind also nodded. That's right. In the first place, it was me who sealed Veldanava's holy corpse. As long as that seal not broken, there's no way someone like you can control all of the powers. Thus, Ramirez instinctively shouted. When he heard that, Yuki wickedly grinned and smiled. Hey, wait a minute? Why did Ramirez blabber about such important information so easily like that? No matter how careless and scatterbrain Ramirez was, this was clearly strange. Too bad. Your seal was pointless. If I make you angry, why don't you release the seal and check it yourself? Don't you dare make fun of me. Okay, let me do that. I was convinced when I saw Ramirez was about to respond to Yuki's provocation. Diablo, stop Ramirez. As you wish. Diablo moved promptly to my order. Gently, but assuredly. He locked up Ramirez, who was kicking up a fuss about something, inside the deployed magic barrier. Hey, what is this, Rimuru? Calm down, Yuki's aim was for you to remove the seal, you know. Just now, you were acting according to his words. Ha. Huh. I calmly answered to the shout of the dissatisfied Ramirez. Ramirez was speechless when she heard my explanation, that would be so, after all, she probably didn't have any recollection about it. If you only listened to the exchange of the words, it was unlikely for you to be tricked by the contents of the conversation, and yet, she unconsciously tried to act as Yuki wanted, it was something unbelievable if you think about it calmly so I naturally thought that there was some kind of skill involved in this. It seemed I had to make sure about this. There was a possibility of me being manipulated too but I decided to trust Seal about this matter. Please leave it to me, I will analyze Yuki's skills. I spoke to Yuki after I received the reply from the reliable Seal. All this occurred while continuing to respond to the fierce sword blows without averting my sight from Yuki. You're still a trickster as ever, Yuki. Haha, <laughs> what do you mean? Don't play dumb. You put thought guidance in your words and you could even trick those with a strong will, I'm sure that's it not a technique on the level of suggestive or hypnotism or something like that, it's very impressive of you. Oh my, thank you. But, it's not fun now that you have seen through it though. Like I care. Yuki dodged my words with his aloof attitude. Since he wasn't phased by it, he seemed to have anticipated that things were to be seen through. Then, this meant thought guidance wasn't his trump card, it might be more reliable to deal with Yuki's words by treating them all as lies. No, could it be that was his aim? If he mixed a bit of truth within the lies, he could make me under the impression that even the truths were lies too. Was it the reverse pattern of mixing a bit of lies into the truths? I think that's very likely. Unfortunately, I have analyzed the wavelength pattern of all his energy including his voice print, but I couldn't discern whether he's lying or telling the truth. Just as I suspected. However, it was a pain that even Seal was unable to tell it apart. It would be certainly difficult as we couldn't read him even from his expressions or emotions. There was nothing that could be done about this. Then, that meant I had no other choice but to judge it myself, what information that Yuki would want me to believe that it was a lie? Additionally, I've confirmed that Yuki's words harbored some kind of power, 
This is probably the primitive magic power of words. I presumed that thought guidance might have evolved. What? Power of words, you said. I asked Seal San for more details, any kind of primitive magic was placed on a higher rank than the magic used by the demons. She said that it was the source of all magic. However, its characteristic wasn't manipulating physical phenomenon, she told me that it had the power to affect the soul. While it had no effect on physical matters, its effect was tremendous inside the spiritual world. In other words, it was a terrifying magic that could exert its effect in invalidating defensive barriers, I was surprised that it could affect even strong people who had awakened ultimate skill. Also a being who could use this magic would become the natural enemy of any spiritual life form. Just like how Ramirez easily got induced now, it could affect the inside of someone's heart. For now, our swordsmanship was on equal terms. Neither I nor Yuki was being impatient, but neither of us had received any blows. Yuki protected his whole body with a god-class armor, but it wouldn't be able to withstand a hit from Veldora sword. Likewise, I wasn't confident that I could withstand a hit from Veldanava's sword. After all, I felt energy surpassing Veldora's sword from that sword. Its power truly should be called as the incarnation of Veldanava. You, it can't be you really can control Veldanava's powers? My hunch told me so as if I received a divine revelation. The reason why Yuki was buying himself time was probably to get enough power to beat us for sure. If that was the case, it was pretty logical that meant for him to obtain Veldanava's powers. What the heck are talking about? There's no way that could be true. That's right, Rimuru. Like I said before, if the seal is not removed. Guy and Ramirez were denying it, but Velzard and Velgrind were silent. Milam was silent as well. They probably had sensed it, the same surges as Veldanava's powers. It was the power overflowing from the sword Yuki wielded. Ha 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 ha. Yuki suddenly began to laugh as if the dam inside was now broken. He kept laughing while blocking the blows from my sword. Then, Fufu, bravo, Rimuru san. There would be nothing at all even if that fairy over there had released the seal. I just wanted to see her face of despair when she did so. After all, it's true that I have broken the seal, you see. Everyone excluding me fell quiet as if they were frozen after they heard Yuki's words. My intuition told me that he was telling the truth. It wasn't a lie to make me cautious, because there was not much merit for him to tell such a lie. That meant Yuki had broken Veldanava's seal in a month. And, the one month delay was for that purpose. Yeah, I wanted to see those faces, after all, I got really serious now. I may have lost the game to end the world using my tools, but wouldn't it be fine for me to have some fun until the end? Yuki was laughing as if he was having fun from the bottom of his heart right now. Yuki relished the joy inside his mind as he felt the place freeze. Now that he became the strongest, he almost achieved his objective. If so, he thought that it would be fun to see the bitter faces of his worthy opponents for a bit longer. If it was a month ago, he wouldn't have been able to fight even one of these difficult opponents directly. But, he had no inferiority complex about that anymore. Instead, those powerful people made him feel excited and the thought of plunging the world into chaos and making his enemies dance in the palm of his hand would give him supreme pleasure. However, all of Yuki's plans had ended in failure due to the presence of Rimuru, who stands in front of him. It had been a series of unexpected situations. When Yuki first met Rimuru in the Ingrasha kingdom, he had felt an indescribable premonition. At that time, Yuki had sent Hanada at him as a safety measure, but Rimuru escaped with ease. It was unbelievable that the calm and vigilant Hanada could fail, and when Rimuru turned out to survive this encounter, Yuki acknowledged Rimuru as his enemy. From that point on, all of his plans have been crushed by Rimuru. However, Yuki didn't feel any anger regarding that matter. On the contrary, Yuki wanted to show his respect towards Rimuru's brilliant skills. Yuki made the decision to move personally for the first time when the situation on the board titled so much that he couldn't win, even if he unleashed all of the pieces in his hands. It wasn't like when he was playing around during his fight with Leon, Yuki seriously decided, for the very first time in his life, that he wanted strength. He estimated that it would take one month for him to unravel all that power. Meanwhile, he decided to let Velda be in the firing line and do as he pleased. Although Yuki's personality was more or less positioned at the top of the pecking order, because it was a mutual switch of beings of the same rank, once they switched places, he couldn't switch with Velda with just his own will. For this reason, this was a gamble for him. Velda's goal was also the collapse of the world, 
But the end result was different than Yuki's. Yuki's end goal was to return this world to nothingness, but Velda's was different. After the collapse, Velda wanted to try to create a new world with him as its god. From Yuki's point of view, that was a naive idea that he couldn't hold back his laughter when thinking about it. And that's it. Thank you so much for watching. And if you guys have not watched my earlier videos, then please watch them. The links are in the description. And please check out my other channel Top Anime Sensei for the light novel of Tensura. And don't forget to like, subscribe and press the bell icon so you don't miss the updates.